So today I will talk. Today I will talk about uh, multiple layers of regulation on carotenoid metabolism. So carotenoids are essential, essential photosynthetic pigments for plants, and they also provide uh, for vitamin A and also serve as uh, excellent antioxidants for human health. Uh, because vitamin A deficiency is still a severe problem in many developing countries. Although uh, uh, carotenoids are very rich in uh, many vegetable crops, crops but uh, in uh, staple crops, uh, the uh, carotenoid content or per vitamin A content is relatively low. So our research focuses on the uh, regulation of carotenoid biosynthesis, know why, and learn how to apply our knowledge to do metabolic engineering to improve the carotenoid content in crops and uh, uh, for what and uh, decide what kind of carotenoid can we provide and uh, the, fin the final content of carotenoid accumulated in crops, how to make them more stable uh, for human health. So first, uh, uh, let's talk about uh, the transcriptional regulation of carotenoid biosynthesis. So comparing to anthocyanin biosynthesis pathway, it, it is a well, well known. It's a three protein family model, uh, BHLH uh, protein family, uh, MIP protein family, and uh, WD40 protein family. They together regulate uh, the anthocyanin biosynthesis pathway. But for carotenoid biosynthesis pathway, uh, I have an emoji for this. Uh, Tear, tear with smiles, uh, tear because we don't have a really conserved model for carotenoid biosynthesis pathway. But that also means we have more opportunities to finally reveal the uh, conserved biosynthesis regulatory mechanism of carotenoid biosynthesis pathway. For the uh, pathway, that, uh, it's quite clear for the carotenoid biosynthesis pathway. Um, PSY phytone synthesis is the uh, first and a uh, really limiting enzyme for the uh, carotenoid biosynthesis, and many regulators are uh, many regulators are found to uh, regulate these key steps of carotenoid biosynthesis. When I was writing the uh, review papers for carotenoid biosynthesis, I was always confused. Uh, how can I put the model of the regulators of the pathway? Actually, we couldn't not, we couldn't find any conserved uh, module like the anthocyanin pathway. So there are many transcription factors like MIP transcription factors, NAC transcription factors, WORKY, BHLH, MAD, MED transcription factors. Um, they function at in different crops, different uh, uh, fruit development stage, uh, different tissues, uh, even in flowers. Uh, they respond to different uh, uh, Signal, developmental signals and uh, different uh, you know, environmental signals. And our question is, do we have a really conserved regulatory model or basic regulatory regular model to uh, control the carotenoid biosynthesis? So first, we focus on uh, GOK transcription factors. Uh, they are a conserved master regulator of chlorophyll biosynthesis and the essential factor for chloroplast development. Previous studies show that PSY gene is affected by GLK transcription factors. Uh, furthermore, we find that uh, both carotenoid and chlorophyll biosynthesis pathway are highly co-expressed uh, with uh, GLK1 and GLK2. So our question is, will they also regulate carotenoid biosynthesis? So, uh, in uh, GLK1 and GLK2 double mutant, the chlorophyll content has, uh, and the carotenoid content are lower than Y type. They show pale green phenotype. But in GLK1 and GLK2 overexpression line, they accumulated more chlorophyll and carotenoids. So, how can we know that GLK's, GLK transcription factors directly regulate carotenoid about synthesis, but not a secondary effect? Because in many cases, we, we, we observe that uh, when Chlorophyll is chlorophyll content is high. The uh, carotenoid content also increased uh, together with the chlorophyll. So how can we can we know that it's uh, it's a direct regulation, not a secondary effect? So we use the different systems. First the scenario, we checked the carotenoid uh, accumulation in Keller's system. We find that uh, in GLK overexpression can upregulate. Uh, carotenoid biosynthesis in the absence of chlorophyll accumulation. 
So that means uh, geo, geo can regulate carotenoid uh, is independent from chlorophyll accumulation. The second scenario is the uh, in etiolated seedlings of Arabidopsis, uh, when the chlorophyll accumulation um, is still not started yet. So we find that uh, geo can also regulate, uh, after regulate carotenoid uh, accumulation uh, in etiolated seedlings without uh, the uh, chlorophyll accumulation. So now we know that uh, GLK has directly regulated carotenoid biosynthesis. Uh, then the next question is how? Previously, GLK was find actually that's initially GLK uh, was identified as a GBF uh, interaction factors by East 2 hybrid, but there are no uh, in vivo evidence of their uh, interaction. So we did a, a luciferase communication assay and a biofac assay. We find that a GLK can GLK transcription factors can interact with the GBF transcription factors in vivo. So what's the regulatory mechanism? So how they regulate uh, PS, especially PSY, the uh, key enzyme for carotenoid biosynthesis, how they regulate the uh, gene expression. So when we check the uh, chip seq data, we find that uh, more than two thirds of GLK1 and GLK2 targets are also the GBF targets. So among those common target, target genes, PSY is one of the, this target gene. And uh, when we uh, check the chip seq data, we find the overlapping peak areas uh, on PSY promoter by GBF and the GLK chip seq. So uh, there are two GBF motif. Uh, those GBF motif are GBF binding site presented in the PSY promoter peak area. So which motif is responsible for protein D DNA interaction? Um, which transcription factor directly bind to the PSY promoter? Uh, that's a problem we're going to solve, solve next. So we designed uh, uh, four probes covering the peak area of the chip seek data. So pro probe two and probe four contains GBOX motif. We use uh, GLK proteins and GBF protein to see that which transcription factor can bind to uh, those probes in the PSY promoter. And we find that uh, GLK1 and GLK2 can find, cannot find any of the probes in the PSY promoter. But at GBF, they can find the GBOX containing motifs, probe 2 and probe 4, in the PSY promoter, which suggests that only GBF can find to the uh, PSY promoter. So this result is also confirmed by our uh, Easter 1 hybrid assay. Uh, when we do a mutation in probe two and probe four, uh, GBF cannot bind to those probes. Uh, then we uh, performed the trans act uh, transactivation activity assay. We find that GLK1 and GLK2, they have high, very high transactivation activity uh, compared to P4, which is also transactivation transactivator. But uh, when we check the uh, activity of GBF1, two and three, we find that they don't have any transactivation activities. So our, our conclusion is, uh, although GBF, they can find, find the DNA, find the uh, GBOX motif, and they don't have the transactivation activity. However, GLKs, they, have, they can provide strong You know? It's phrased. Yeah. <clears throat> you know? uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but we cannot hear you. You're frozen. Okay, now I think it's okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, what happened? Uh, I think you got frozen in between and uh, we had oh, to. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we couldn't hear basically. Yeah. Can okay. you share oh. again? Yeah, yeah, of course. Sorry about that.
So where did we stop? Here? Yeah, I think this slide. Yeah, okay, thank you. So when we test the transactive, transactivation activity, we find that only GOK1 and GOK2, they have strong transactivation activity, but not GBF1, 2, or 3. Uh, so our conclusion is uh, GBFs, they can directly find DNA, but they don't have the transactivation activity. But the GOK, they can provide this transactivation activity. Uh, so they probably uh, interact with GBF to directly regulate the downstream gene expression. So when we perform the transactivation as in vivo, we find that if we express GLK1 and GBF1 together, they can strongly upregulate a PSY uh, promoter, activate a PSY promoter. So when we check the uh, GLK and the GBF expression during the plant development stage, we find that uh, GLK1 and GBF1, they showed a, a higher uh, regulation uh, during the leaf development. It means that together they have a higher uh, activity to regulate a downstream gene expression. So when we take a close look uh, of GLK, GLK and GBF in nucleus and how they inject in nucleus, we find that uh, GLK and GBF, uh, if we overexpress them uh, separately, they dis distribute it quite evenly in the nucleus. But when we do the uh, bifac assay, uh, which uh, overexpress uh, GLK and GBF, we find that, that they show the nu nuclear condensates. They probably form a form, uh, liquid liquid phase separation in, uh, in the nucleus. So we checked the property of GLK and GBF transcript factors. We find that uh, GBF transcript factors they show they show the uh, the protein sequence um, more prefer more preferable to undergo liquid liquid phase separation, but not a GLK. So uh, our hypothesis is uh, GBF interact with GLK to form a to form a transcription complex and induce the phase liquid liquid phase separation to activate downstream gene expression. So next, uh, we are seeking the genetic evidence to uh, finally prove that GBFs are required for the GLK regulation of uh, carotenoid biosynthesis or PSY expression. So we knock out uh, GBF1 and 2, 3 in the GLK overexpression background. We find that uh, uh, when we knock out the GBF, uh, they can reverse the phenotype of GLK1 and GLK2 overexpression. Um, they should a uh, normal uh, chlorophyll uh, level compared to uh, wild type. When we check the catalyst system, because we find that uh, GLK1 and GLK2 overexpression, they can accumulate they can accumulate a higher level of carotenoid. But when we knock out of GBF in uh, GLK1 or GLK2 overexpression line, we didn't see the higher level of carotenoid accumulation in the callus. So let's recap what we did for the transcriminal regulation of carotenoid biosynthesis. So we identified a GLK GBF complex, a bona fide regulator module of carotenoid biosynthesis. We find that GLK provide a transactivation acti activity, while GBF directly bind to the GBox motif in PSY promoter. And our result also suggests that GLK and GBF together, they may form a, form a liquid liquid phase separation uh, and a nuclear condensate to regulate PSY gene expression. So that's for the uh, transcriminal regulation of carotenoid biosynthesis. Then uh, we also investigated the co regulation of, of carotenoid with chlorophyll biosynthesis at the post translational level, level. We know that. The right amount, right composition of photosynthetic, photosynthetic pigments are very important for the uh, plants to uh, better uh, survive in changing environments. They need to balance the carotenoid and the chlorophyll content to better perform under different con environmental conditions. So uh, an orange gene uh, controlling better 
characterizing accumulation uh, in fruit and vegetable was first characterized in uh, Dr. Lee's lab from a uh, orange cauliflower mutant. So all the origin or OR gene family is highly conserved in plants. Uh, later, it was also found to uh, regulate uh, uh, carotenoid accumulation uh, in melon and it has a different cross. So uh, how OR gene regulate uh, or balance carotenoid and chlorophyll in leaves that's more common for plants. So we find that the mutation of OR and OR-like genes also affect chloroplast function. Um, if we, both OR and OR-like genes are uh, knocked out, we find that uh, there are no cell coin membrane stacking in the chloroplast and uh, the uh, photosynthesis ability was re significantly reduced in the uh, OR OR-like double mutant. Uh, when we look at the uh, photosynthetic pigment, that we find that uh, the light housing co complex assembly is significantly reduced. Uh, and those uh, uh, compo components in the light housing complex protein, uh, are the, those protein levels are also uh, reduced uh, in the or, or light double mutant. So we further uh, confirm that uh, especially the uh, main protein, LHCb1 and LHCb2 in light harvesting complex are significantly reduced in the OR, OR like uh, double mutant. So how does OR function in those photosynthetic uh, proce process? Previously, we know that OR and protein uh, they together uh, regulate the PS PSY activity and uh, the folding of PSY for the carotenoid biosynthesis. So uh, when we check the uh, turnover or stability of PSY and uh, chlorophyll uh, synthesis, we find that without uh, OR, uh, both CHLI, the uh, key enzyme for chlorophyll biosynthesis and PSY, the, the first community step of carotenoid biosynthesis, they turn over very quick compared to wild type. So, OR is essential for the uh, stability of CHLI and PSY. Uh, both are important for uh, photosynthetic pigment biosynthesis in uh, green leaves. So when we overexpression uh, of when we overexpress OR and uh, we treat it with the heat stress, we find that the CHLI and the PSY protein level is quite stable under heat stress condition. So that means OR is a chamfer. Uh, it can maintain PSY and uh, CHLI level for carotenoid biosynthesis and chlorophyll biosynthesis. When we check the enzyme activity, we find that the uh, magnesium catalytic activity for the chlorophyll biosynthesis uh, is quite increased with OR. And uh, uh, at the heat stress uh, condition, the PSY activity is also maintained at a higher level compared to Y type. So that means OR can maintain those uh, both chlorophyll and carotenoid enzyme level and, and enzyme activity uh, at high temperature condition. So the overexpression of OR confers uh, plant thermal tolerance uh, because they uh, maintain the chlorophyll and carotenoids, make them less impaired uh, under the heat stress condition. Uh, we test both in arboxys in and also in tomato uh, using heat, heat stress treatment, we find that uh, the carotenoid and uh, chlorophyll uh, accumulation are both are less impaired comparing to the wild type. So let's recap what we uh, got from this study. So OR is a master post -trans translational regulator that coordinated uh, regulator both chlorophyll and carotenoid biosynthesis which are uh, essential photosynthetic pigment in chloroplasts. Uh, the function of OR uh, in plant resistance to, to abiotic stress uh, that has been reported in different plants, uh, but uh, the mechanism remains unknown. Here we uh, revealed the possible mechanism for OR to increase the plant abiotic stress resistance. Also OR provides a, a potential target for generating uh, climate resilient crops in addition to improving the nutrition value in crops. 
So the second part will talk about the carotenoid, carotenoid stable uh, storage. So uh, in this part, we're talking about the chloroplast chromoplast number. So chloroplast is the only site for photosynthesis in plants, but chromoplast is the main site for carotenoid storage in many tissues like uh, roots and fruits. So uh, we find that in OR mutant, although it can induce chromoplast uh, formation and uh, carotenoid accumulation, but uh, when we take a close look of uh, each cell uh, in those uh, carotenoid enriched uh, tissue, we find that there is only one or two large chromoplasts in each cell. But when we take a look at uh, the, uh, each cell in the tomato, we will find uh, many chromoplasts in each cell. So we uh, re reassemble this uh, phenom phenomenon in uh, our autopsy's callus. When we overexpress or his, we also uh, observed that only one or two chromoplasts in each cell. But when we overexpress case Y, uh, which induces a huge number, huge uh, carotenoid accumulation, we can observe uh, many chromoplasts in each cell. So our question is, how, how are his uh, regulated chromoplast division? And can we uh, manipulate the chromoplast division to further increase chromoplast number to make more carotenoid uh, accum accumulate in each cell? So we find that OR is associated with the uh, non-green plastic division. If we check the OR Y-type GFP or OR his GFP, they are quite concentrated uh, on the division side of the plastic. But when we check the uh, OR Y-type GFP or OR his GFP, they are quite evenly distributed in the division in the division chloroplasts. Uh, we didn't observe any concentration of OR protein in the uh, division site. And also, uh, when we check the plastic number, we find that uh, uh, in OR his uh, our expression, the plastic, the plastic number is significantly reduced. So how does OR regulate chromoplastic uh, division or duplication? Uh, does this use the uh, same mechanism as, as chloroplast division? Because the, the chloro, chloroplast division is well established. Uh, there are many no, known factors to regulate the chlor, chloroplast division by uh, assembling of division rings to constrain the chlor, chloroplast into uh, two parts and finally divide them into separate chloroplasts. So does OR use this? Same, same or similar me mechanism of chloroplast division. So we checked the interaction of, between OR and those known division factors. We find that uh, OR can interact with ARP3 and, and this interaction, when we use a EAST3 hybrid, this interaction will reduce the existing interaction between ARP3 and, and uh, PX6. So OR his uh, uh, interfere the interaction between the existing division mechanism. So when we uh, we confirm the, the interaction uh, between OR and uh, R3, and also when we do the co-IP, we find that uh, uh, in OR his, OR his line, uh, the interaction be between R6 and uh, PR6 and R3 is reduced if uh, we overexpress or his. So now the uh, mechanism is quite uh, uh, clear that or his interaction with up three to interfere interfere the existing interaction between PX6 and up three. So that may affect the uh, chromoplast division. So the next question is: since we already know that or uh, his can uh, affect chromoplast division. Can we manipulate chromoplast division by uh, changing the expression of those division factors? So we overexpress the different division factors of uh, inner division ring and outer division ring. Uh, the inner division uh, Z ring, FTSZ, and out, outside of uh, PD ring, PDV1 and PDV2, we find that only PDV1 
uh, can increase the carotenoid level in cannabis <clears throat> and also increase the uh, chromotoxin number. So uh, let's recap from this study. So from this study, we uh, solved the question uh, that how, non, how does non-green plastic duplicate? So we, provide, we provided the mechanism for the chrome plastic division and also provide a potential method to increase the carotenoid storage ability in chrome plastic. So um, we also have some questions uh, we wait to us to, uh, to solve is, uh, are there more essential factors for chrome plastic division? Uh, are they use the uh, identical mechanism as chloroplasts or a uh, different mechanism? So there are still some questions waiting for us to, to solve in the future. So uh, since we talk about uh, multiple layers of, of the regulation on carotenoid biosynthesis, we first talk about uh, the uh, regulation at a transcriptional level and then the uh, post-translational regulation of carotenoid biosynthesis. Uh, then we talk about uh, the regulation of carotenoid storage in chromoplasts, how to increase the chromoplast number to increase the, uh, the uh, total carotenoid content in uh, different crops. So then uh, we are thinking about how can we uh, transfer our knowledge from mechanistic study to metabolic engineering to finally increase the nutrition value in different crops. So if we uh, take a look at the uh, oil painting about uh, uh, 400 years ago, we will figure out that the car carrots are not as orange as the modern carrots, and the uh, watermelons are not as uh, red as modern watermelons. So there's a long way of domestic domestication to increase the carotenoid content in our vegetables or our fruits. But nowadays we can use metabolic engineering to engineer a mini pathway of carotenoid biosynthesis to introduce or increase the carotenoid content in, uh, crop, in vegetable crops or in, uh, stable crops in, in rice or in maize. So uh, what can we, what, what can we apply our knowledge from the mechanistic study to the metabolic engineering in future? How can we better engineer crops to increase the uh, carotenoid content? So initially we're focusing on seeds because seeds are rich in energy, but they cannot provide sufficient nutrition in general, uh, especially for those developing country. Uh, if, the, if their food are mainly relies on the uh, uh, cereal cr crops or, or the seeds, so they cannot get uh, enough pro vitamin A uh, from, from the daily food. So firstly, we are uh, looking the method to, uh, met to do the metabolic engineering in seeds. How can we more efficiently increase the carotenoid content in seeds? So there are several considerations of uh, the genetic engineering of seed carotenoid content. First, we take a look at the, uh, we use Aerodopsis as a model, and uh, we take a look at the carotenoid metabolism. First, the carotenoid biosynthesis ability. So during the uh, seed development stage, the carotenoid biosynthesis ability is slightly reduced during this process. Meanwhile, the degradation of carotenoid, of carotenoids are in, are increasing because the, the uh, degradation enzyme expression are increased, especially like uh, the uh, BCH2 and the cleavage en enzymes. And also the oxidative stress during the seed development stage is increasing because the, uh, the protein of uh, carotenoid molecules, they are very vulnerable to oxidative stress and they are easily to uh, degrade uh, under the oxida oxidative stress. So our target is also uh, to, in to reduce the oxidative stress during the seed development and storage uh, stage. Another factor we should consider is the ABA biosynthesis because the 
ABA, uh, so ABA use carotenoid as a per, as a precursor. If we have uh, over accumulated carotenoids, they probably will uh, disturb the ABA biosynthesis. Then uh, it will uh, affect the germination of seeds. So how can we increase uh, carotenoid content without uh, the uh, compromising the germination or viability of the seeds? So those are several considerations uh, before we do the genetic engineering of carotenoid biosynthesis in seeds. So based on uh, those uh, consideration and the Make the understanding of the carotenoid biosynthesis. We selected several genes for the, for the manipulation of carotenoid biosynthesis. First, we want to overexpress PSY, uh, specifically in seeds, because PSY is the bottleneck of carotenoid biosynthesis. Then we want to increase uh, the reduce the, the oxidative stress. We want we want to increase the vitamin E content in seeds, which is also an uh, excellent antioxidant to reduce the uh, degradation and the oxidative degradation of carotenoids. So we want to uh, express H HGGT, which is enzyme for vitamin E biosynthesis in the seeds. We also uh, want to overexpress over uh, ORHIS in seeds because ORHIS can induce chromoplast formation and uh, uh, increase the uh, accumulation capability of carotenoid in seeds. And also ORHIS can uh, stabilize PSY to make a PSY more stable during the seed development stage. Then we uh, want to knock out the BCH2 because it leads to the uh, ABA biosynthesis. We want uh, uh, BCH uh, keep low level to reduce, reduce the, uh, to reduce the risk uh, to increase, to disturb ABA biosynthesis. So we want to see the specific uh, overexpression of three enzymes and also knock out the BCH2 uh, to reduce the risk of uh, interference of ABA biosynthesis. So we, we generated uh, uh, different constructs with the overexpression, knock out BCH, uh, knock out BCH and overexpress PSY, uh, knock out BCH, overexpress PSY or his and knock out BCH overexpression PSY or his and HGT and see what's the uh, result, what's the performance of the uh, genetic engineering of those uh, enzymes in Arbopsis seeds. So when we check the composition of major carotenoids, we find that uh, uh, overexpression of uh, PSY and or his and knock out of uh, BCH significantly increase the beta carotene content and our alpha carotene content uh, in hydroxyl seeds. And also that when we check the uh, seeds of those lines, we find that uh, the BPOH knockout B, uh, and the BPO knockout uh, BCH uh, overexpress PSY on OR, they can induce the chrome plus formation at the seed development stage. We, if we check under a microscope, we already see the chromoplast formation in those seeds. We can see a lot of chroma, chromoplasts in BPO and BPOH seeds. That means the ORHIS induced chromoplast formation and a, a high level of carotenoid accumulation. Then we want to see that uh, if the carotenoid stability was maintained, uh, if we reduce the uh, uh, antioxidant, uh, reduce the, the oxidative stress by the uh, by increased vitamin E level. We find that uh, the uh, BPOH and BPO, they both maintain a high level of carotenoid uh, content uh, after storage of seeds uh, at 37 de degree after several weeks. They can keep to around 80% 80, 80 of the uh, initial carotenoid content after uh, after the seed maturation. But for the wild type, the carotenoid content decreased sharply. They are only keep about 50% of the carotenoid in, uh, comparing to the uh, uh, dry seed uh, after, the mature, after the maturation. 
So that means um, with the multi-watching uh, engineering, we can increase the carotenoid uh, content and uh, increase their stability. Uh, and uh, also the maintain the carotenoid content uh, after the storage, which is uh, uh, very useful for the uh, carotenoid uh, or for vitamin A engineering in those uh, cereal crops like uh, rice or wheat to finally increase provitamin A content and the uh, uh, increase the uh, bioavailability of the carotenoid or provitamin A or carotenoids in the, those seed, those crops. So let, let's conclude what we learned from our study and the perspectives. So carotenoid biosynthesis is regulated at uh, multiple layers by exploring the uh, regulation at a transcriptional level, at a post-translational level, and at uh, the carotenoid storage level. However, the current magnetic study, well, the current magnetic study of carotenoid uh, biosynthesis is still expanding. We are still expanding the uh, conserved regulator module. Uh, to regulate carotenoid uh, biosynthesis instead of uh, in different uh, vegetable uh, crops, uh, different uh, regulatory uh, mechanism or uh, specific transcription factors to regulate carotenoid uh, biosynthesis. We want to know the conserved uh, regulatory module for the future metabolic engineering of carotenoid biosynthesis. So our mechanistic study of, of the regulation of carotenoid biosynthesis largely benefit the uh, metabolic engineering of carotenoids and uh, to increase the nutrition content of carotenoids uh, in different kinds of crops. Uh, so uh, that's what we did and the uh, future perspectives of the regulation of carotenoid biosynthesis. So this work is supported by USDA uh, NIFA grant and uh, USDA IRS uh, uh, based funding and thank you to our lab members and uh, especially thanks to our excellent undergraduate students uh, to uh, their work on they worked on the uh, seed carotenoid container project and uh, thank you our collaborators uh, uh, um, dr that uh, he worked on the uh, seed carotenoid project and uh, uh, Cassie Oster young and she uh, coll we coll collaborated with Cassie Oster young to work on the Chrome Pass Division Project and uh, uh, Professor Ed Edgar Cahun, um, we collaborated with, with the uh, vitamin E analysis and uh, Bernard Grimm, uh, we worked with him uh, to figure out the co-regulation of uh, uh, chlor chlorophyll and carotenoid biosynthesis in uh, of OR at a post-translational level. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take any questions. That was a great talk, you know. Uh, Thank you. If anybody, yeah, if anybody has any questions, I feel free to uh, you know ask directly or put them in the chat. Yeah, nice talk, Tianhu. My question is regarding the OR function. Does OR actually um, affect the um, PARC six and ARC three protein levels? You know, it looks like it affects the chloroplast division. Does it directly interact with those uh, proteins and uh, affect the protein levels? First question. Yes, that's a good question. Actually, we checked, uh, we checked uh, uh, those uh, um, division protein levels. So, uh, we checked uh, FTSZ, ARC3, and PAC6. We got antibodies from uh, Cassie's lab. And we didn't see any cha significant change of those protein levels, so we believe that it will change. It uh, it, it affected the uh, existing protein protein interaction in, instead of changing those protein levels, because the OR is a gain of function mutation. So with uh, one one amino acid change, it can it gain a function to bind the X3, so it will compete with CAC6 to uh, to interact with us three. So that's our hypothesis. But we didn't see it affect the protein level of those division factors. Mm, thank you. Same question is, uh, 
So the GLK and uh, GBF, the regulatory module is only uh, regulates PSY or it's actually the, the downstream genes would be like the promoter would be binding by GBF or it's, you know, it's like the whole pathway is regulated or specifically the PSY. Yeah, we are uh, actually we are working on that uh, uh, manuscript. Uh, we also have other targets uh, from both carotenoid biosynthesis and uh, chlorophyll biosynthesis because there are also G-box motif presented in those gene promoters. We also find a peak of the, on those gene promoters. Uh, we didn't show that result here because we uh, want to focus on PSY because it's the very limiting step and then the key enzyme for carotenoid biosynthesis. Uh, so simple, the simple answer is yes. They also regulated several other enzymes of both chlorophyll and carotenoid biosynthesis as well. Thank you. Stacy. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I can't see myself. I'm sorry to be a dork. I'm on my phone with for the for the audio and on my my desktop so I can see the slides big. Um, this was so interesting. I kind of I'm super fascinated with carotenoid biosynthesis and chromoplast. Like I find it the most interesting puzzle. And I have two questions. One, I think it just um, I so part of your talk was about chromoplast division and. Um, I, I had, I've seen figures before about like one chromoplast turning into another. And the sense I had always gotten was that chromoplasts were sort of, you know, dead chloroplasts. Like they, like they converted from chromoplasts into chloroplasts, or excuse me, chloroplasts into chromoplasts. And it was like a dead end. So the idea yeah. that they kept dividing was kind of, um, I was like, okay, well, how, what else am I wrong about? <laughs> Is I guess is that yeah, sort of developmental correct. trajectory very certain that that is the developmental trajectory and that like once you're a chromoplast you're stuck there. Um, so maybe you could just tell me a little bit more about that background that like seems basic that I should probably know. Yes, you are correct. Like for the for the uh, chromoplast formation in like let's say in tomato fruit, so it's directly converted from chloroplast to chromoplast. Um, but for our case, uh, because uh, um, for our case is uh, or because that uh, or his mutation, it induces the chromoplast formation from the proplast or amino or uh, leucoplast. So it triggers the chromoplast formation instead of the transition from other type of plastic. So uh, that's a specific case for our study, because in only in our his we can see the phenomenon that there's only one chromoplast formation because it's, it controls the uh, chloroplast development from the pro proplastid instead of control the transition from other type. Like in, like, uh, let's take, like in cauliflower, cauliflower it's a kind of meristem. So it induces the proplastid uh, direct differentiation into chromoplast instead of transition from other type of chromoplast. Okay, that's very helpful. Okay, and then um, is it true though that that once you become differentiated into a chromoplast, you can't become any other type of plastid? Like that's kind of the dead end in that direction. Like you can't go back to being a proplastid or or convert to another kind of plastid. Like you can't become a functioning chloroplast um, once you're a chromoplast. That I don't think that's a dead end. So uh, chromoplast can also transfer back into chloroplast. Let's, let's take an uh, example, oh. uh, uh, for example, like in carrots. If the, if, if the carrot is half part in, under the ground in the soil and half part uh, under the light in, uh, in, in light, in the light. So with the light, that can trigger the conversion from chloroplast back to chloroplast, not back to convert to chloroplast to chloroplast. So that's, that's why, yeah, well, that's why we have bidirectional uh, arrows here. They can convert from one type to another. 
Okay, I think the arrows went a little fast for me. I actually did not see the little points on the arrows. <laughs> I'm gonna have question. to download the, the review. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great question and a great observation. Thank so my, my other question was about um, the regulation of anthocyanin biosynthesis versus carotenoid biosynthesis, because I've always found it super puzzling that anthocyanin biosynthesis, you know, you can look in all kinds of different tissues and species and you find it's like the same groups of genes. It makes candidate gene work relatively yeah. possible in a wide range of species. And then with carotenoid regulators, every time one, you know, launches a study in a new tissue or a new species, it's something totally else. And I've just yeah, puzzled about why, why this is, because both sets of pigments do have some similar physiological roles, are expressed in lots of different contexts, need to be turned on quickly, have light responsive um, elements. <clears throat> so the only thing I can come up with is that you don't need anthocyanins for um, photosynthesis, whereas carotenoids are accessory pigments for photosynthesis. So they're sort of, I just wonder if they're not sort of linked more broadly into more physiological processes just because they are um, more fundamental for plant physiology that you know yes. like you, you have to have yes. them around to do photosynthesis do you think that's a reasonable explanation or is there are there other things that result in this horrible tangle for and the lack of basically candidate genes like you can't just walk off to another species and try and guess what genes going to be doing it you'll be searching through candidates forever yeah i quite agree with you because uh, for and signing biosynthesis like even even we overexpress the MIP transcription factor, we our our dosage signs are quite uh, purple. They accumulate a huge amount of enzyme, but that won't affect the plant growth, right? It can all, still grow very well. But for carotenoid biosynthesis, uh, uh, I I agree with you because uh, carotenoid biosynthesis, uh, if we have uh, any fluctuation of carotenoid biosynthesis, it will affect uh, the photosynthesis. So that's why uh, the that, that's why uh, the, the we that's why I, I guess that's why it's hard to identify the conserved regulatory module uh, factor of cardinal biosynthesis because if we have a mutation that will finally affect the growth of plants. But in in other tissues like in fruits, like in roots, uh, in flowers, there are different kind of transcription factors probably related with the develop, development and the fruit, fruit development, they can regulate carotenoid uh, biosynthesis as well as other aspects, the other metabolites. Yes, I agree with you. The that's, so, that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I may, ha, I'm always looking for papers to cite <laughs> where somebody else has the same idea. So um, this is really useful. Now I have some papers to cite <laughs> about this topic. Thank you very much. Thank you. There is a question in the chat. That knocking out VCH2 had an effect on seed germination. Uh, so there are two BCH, two BCH. So we just knock out one BCH because we find that it's high expression in seed development stage. We don't want a, a more capture, more ABI biosynthesis because of higher uh, BCH2 uh, in this process. But we still want to maintain the basic level of ABI balance. So we didn't knock out all the BCH, there's still another BCH in the, uh, expressed in the, in the seed, seed development stage. So we checked the uh, seed germination and we didn't find the uh, side effect of seed germination uh, when we overexpress uh, over accumulation of carotenoid and knock out just one BCH. So that's why we, uh, we designed this uh, genetic engineering method to just knock out one instead of knock out knock out all of them. We want we still want to keep the uh, uh, activity of BCH but not not too high during the uh, seed development stage. Any other questions? If not, then uh, first of all, let's thank Tian Hu for this beautiful talk and beautiful research. Uh, if Tian Hu, you have a few minutes to wait and chat in case somebody 
people want to have an informal yeah, chat yeah sure sure it's almost one but yeah if anybody is interested mm-hmm. in in talking we can just hang out 